In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how you can set up Font Awesome's icons as pseudo elements, because as useful as they are, just putting them in as, you know, you can put in the i tag, they give you a nice easy way to do it. There are some drawbacks to that. We're going to look at what those are. We're also going to see how easy it is to do with pseudo elements, how we can change the icon really easily, how we can set it all up so it's uh, relatively robust and easy to incorporate into your sites. So if that sounds like something you want to learn how to do, stick around. Hi, my name is Kevin and welcome to my channel where we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. As I said, we're going to be looking at how to set up Font Awesome's icons as pseudo elements, but the page we're going to be doing it on is a interactive card that I set up. We're trying to copy a card that's on PopDog's website. It's a really cool interactive uh, card. I did most of the grunt work already in another video, so if you look at this card, you like how it works and you want to see how to do it yourself, you can check out that first video. In this one, we're going to be putting in the pseudo elements, and then I'm going to have some other future videos. We're going to be doing a cool like pulsing thing on a hover element, and we're also going to add in an SVG clip path uh, that's animated at one point as well. Before we do get into that though, I want to let you know that this video is being brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers thousands of classes that can help inspire you, help you find some creativity, and help you explore new topics as well as dive deeper into things you've already started to learn about. They have classes on both front-end and back-end development, UI and UX, as well as a whole wide range of topics such as Ali Abdal's Productivity Masterclass. I know you're here to learn about some cool CSS stuff, but it can often be really hard to balance learning, working on new projects, your whole day job, family, and probably more as well. Ali's class is all about upping your productivity while also dispelling myths about things like motivation and multitasking along the way. Now, if you'd like to give Skillshare a try, the first 1,000 of my subscribers who click the link down in the description below will get their first two months free of their premium membership. You also won't have to worry about breaking the bank after that. With an annual subscription at Skillshare, it is less than $10 a month. And one of the things I like about it the most is the majority of the classes are under 60 minutes long, so you get the information you need without wasting your time. And most of the classes also come with projects for you to work on. So while you're learning, you're also putting everything into context by doing things hands-on yourself. So if you'd like to join Skillshare, use the link down below to get your first two months for free and enjoy everything that Skillshare has to offer. All right, so here on the Pop Dog website, you can see next to the number here, 558.2, there is this icon, little dude icon there. And I wanna bring that in using Font Awesome because there's something that will work really well for that. And if I come over here and I hover, there's also a play icon. There's other ways to make a triangle like that, but since we're gonna be bringing in Font Awesome anyway, I figured this is uh, we can do it for both of them. In this video, I'm only gonna bring in that little guy, but we're gonna see exactly how to set up Font Awesome to work properly. And some of the little things I think get hung up if you are using the free version of it, which we're going to be doing here. Um, so yeah, right now this is what I have. Um, so if we go to fontawesome.com, I went to the get started and you can see here that uh, version six is coming, always exciting when new stuff is coming. Um, and you can put in your email here to get your own unique CDN powered kit. And there are advantages to doing this, but because it's a quick demo, you just want to quickly go through things. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use CDN uh, JS here. So it's cdnjs.com. The link for it will be in the description down below. And I'm just going to write font awesome here. And you can link to pretty much anything uh, from this guys. And I'm just going to go to the all. Um, again, it's, I'm, we're doing this for demo purposes. I'm not trying to optimize anything. Uh, in here, but you might want to go to one of the specific ones. If you only need brand icons, if you only need the solid, you know, stuff like that. Uh, and I'm just going to go copy link tag right here and click right on that. And then I can come to my own file and I can paste that right in. So I get the, the link. I'm just going to leave it exactly as is. I'm not going to touch it. I can now use font awesome on my site. So let's hit save there. And I'm going to come back to font awesome site now. And all the way at the top, I'm, you can just go to search icons. I'm going to click on icons though, and we'll go to that screen. And on this screen, what I'm going to do is look up um, user. I think user is probably what we would want. There we go. We have single user. I can do this one or that one. Don't worry about colors. Don't worry about anything. Very customizable. So I'm going to go with this guy right here. And you can actually see we get both of them anyway. <laughs> we have the regular, the solid. Um, and you can see I can actually use either one of these for free. And these ones down here are the duotone version. So it's two colors. If we click, we can actually see it. Um, so if you want two color ones or you want the light version, so just here you can see the lines are thicker. So if you want the lighter version of it, you do have to pay. But there are tons of icons for free um, if you need them. 
And over here, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can get it. If I click this, it's actually gonna copy the glyph. And if I was using design software and I had Font Awesome installed on my computer, then I could paste that right into the design software. In this case, I don't wanna do that. Um, one thing we could do is grab this right here. So I'm gonna click on that and show you that it actually would work. So this is in my numbers, so our viewers. So if I paste this right here and hit save, that dude is gonna come in right there. We can do a little bit of styling, move it over, play around with it. Um, but I don't really like this solution. And most of the times for icons, we don't need to put them in this way. One reason I don't like this solution is because the reason Font Awesome started using the I tag, which was the old italic that got deprecated, was because it became deprecated. They suggested using M instead. I actually has semantic meaning to it now. And so, you know, and it, I also have never been a fan of just having empty elements. Sometimes you can't help it. But when possible, I prefer avoiding it. And I really find in this case, it's not really a piece of content. It's a visual aid. It's not important to the content itself. So uh, instead of dropping him in just like that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to the Font Awesome uh, website and I'm gonna go over to their docs because they talk exactly about what we want right here. Uh, if you go down far enough, now they do put it, it's under the advanced section here and you can see it says CSS pseudo elements. And I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit and it gives you an example of them working. Now I'm gonna make some changes from this, but I am gonna grab this right here and we're gonna start with this as my baseline for it. So copy that, we can jump back over to mine and we can come over to my own CSS. And uh, I just wanna see in my file, this was called viewers, which was in my front. So let's find that. This is all in my hover. So I don't wanna be in the hover, I want it to be in my regular area. Um, so it's in my stats, but I'm not gonna nest it in there. So we're just gonna do uh, viewers, viewers like that. And I'm gonna paste this in here. Um, but I'm going to delete all of this stuff because we don't need that. I don't, whoops. And like that, because I don't need their selector. I want to use my own selector and I'm going to do a before on this. Now, if you don't know a lot about pseudo elements, I would really recommend checking out my videos where I do a deep dive on it. It's a three part series, but the first one really is enough to get you started. So I'm not going to go really deep into why we're using a before uh, versus an after or exactly everything I'm setting up in here because that video really deep dives it and takes a, a, a nice big look at how pseudo elements work. Now, the other thing in here you'll notice is they're setting the font family, and this is where it's important. We also need to grab that, so I can grab all of this. And we're gonna paste it in here, and this is doing a few different things, and you can see my um, prettier clean that up for me. But here I have my font awesome, so it's setting the font family, it's setting a font weight, and here there's the content property. So if you know pseudo elements, you know you have to put a content property and you might be really used to leaving this blank. But in this case, we're not going to leave it blank because we need content in there. And this is what's going to populate it. And this actually happens to work out really, really well because the content that we got in there, let's go back to my user icon. It's actually put in this user icon right here. So if I come back to my site now, we should actually see if we hit save, we should see there we go. We can see our little icon has shown up there. Cool, right? Um, now, just to show you how there's a combination here of the content and the font weight that's really important because I've actually switched this over to, I believe it's 700. It will switch, or is it 400? There we go. It's switched to that outline version instead of being the full version. So the font weight, whenever you go onto an icon in here and you can see there's different versions of it, it's using the different font weights to be able to switch between the different ones that you can see here. So that is really important to know. And if ever you need a different icon, if you don't want that one, let's just say you wanted this guy instead. I don't know why you'd want an address book, but it's right here at the top. You can click on that and I just have to switch this right here. But you will find every now and then an icon. Um, whoops, I forgot the forward slash there or the backslash. Um, so there you go. You can see that icon has come in. Now, every now and then you will find icons that uh, the font weight isn't working for. So you pasted this in. It's just not working. And this, you might have to drop down to the 400 before the icon will load in. So do pay a lot of attention. If something's not working, try a different font weight. And sometimes that will fix your issue. And just try the regular ones, 400, 900 um, will usually get you there. But it's always going to be uh, the solid, I think, is always 900. And I think the regular is always 400. So that should solve some problems that you might run into along the way. Let's go back to my original icon now. Now there's a little bit more that we can do with it because you know we're controlling the pseudo element, but now it's effectively a piece of text. So I could come in on this um, and you will notice that it is an inline block. This was part of the code that I, I stole when I put it in, 
But if I just made that block, they're going to stack on top of each other. So inline block is useful and you can play with your margins and everything. Um, but do remember it is pretty much a piece of text now. So I can come in here and actually I'm going to move this font stuff right here to the top. Um, and we are going to look at the organization of this in a second, just because I don't, we're going to see a, a bit more of a, a better way to do it in a second. But we have my font weight is 900, uh, font style, font variant. So we're going to come right here um, we're going to say font size and maybe it's like a 0.75m, something like that to shrink it down. That looks a little bit better. Um, it's not lining up perfectly with that text though, but we can fix that in a second um, by saying that my viewers is display flex and then we can do a flex, uh, align items center. There we go. So it's perfectly centered. And my font size is 0.75 and let's give that a margin left of, I don't know, 0.5m or something like that. Kind of small, uh, margin right, not left. But just to build in a bit of a gap there uh, in between the two of them so that they're spaced out a little bit. Maybe we could actually make the font size on this a little bit bigger. There we go. I think that's looking pretty darn good. Now, in this case, I don't have to change the color of it, but if I wanted to, it's super easy to do. We can just come in here and say color is red and it will change color. So it's just like text. It's exactly the same as a piece of text at this point. Or I could even say something like color RGBA uh, 000, whoops, not hyphens, 000, uh, 0.75 or something. And then it will be a little bit grayed out. Oh, zero is black. I meant to do 255 on these. Let's fix that, 255, so it's white. And then it's a little faded out um, just so it's not such a punch in the face. Uh, but we are trying to copy this one, actually, Going back to there, maybe the 0.75 was actually pretty good because I am trying to copy that. So maybe a color like that would actually work out a little better. Now I do realize that theirs is a little bit more um, narrow, but I'm not going to stress. I'm not matching it perfectly. I've already made a few stylistic other changes to it, and I do think it is close enough. Um, now the other thing I would suggest doing though is instead of having um, your having to set all of this every single time, um, setting the font family and probably whoops. Setting the font family, probably your display property, and a few other things. Um, it would probably be useful if you had some sort of um, generic icon thing, just like they suggested in their documentation. You'll see when I copied, remember when I copied and pasted, there was an icon that had a whole bunch of settings, um, and then there was the, you know, we're setting up the minute stuff. So I do think if we came up all the way to here to where my more generic classes are, if we said icon, um, and it would be my icon before, and we can move a few of these things around. And the reason this is good is just so you don't have to retype in a lot of this stuff every single time. So if our icon is always going to have probably most of this, I'm going to do uh, the color it won't have. Whatever, I'm just going to do a copy and then we'll delete some stuff. Uh, so we're going to uh, I'm going to copy all of it actually. Um, and then the ones I'm going to keep here are um, the font size I think is good to keep here because that way you can modify your icon uh, for each one. The font weight we should keep here, but the font style and the font variant I'm going to remove. Font rendering we'll bring up and something like that. So all of those I would put under a generic icon like this. Uh, so if I paste that in, uh, so the content obviously will change because the icon will always be different. Display I, we want to keep there. The color we want to get rid of, but it's always going to be using the font awesome. The font weight can change, so we could set a default here and then you override it if you need to. Maybe that's a good idea if you're always using solid icons, but if you're switching between, um, but in this case, I'm going to use solid icons for all of my icons on this one. So I can leave that there. These I want to leave here. The font size margin are going to change all the time. And these are sort of the defaults. So that's the reason that a lot of this was included um, in the font awesome's default styling of it. But I do think it's, you might as well also have the font family in here. To me, that makes a bit more sense. Um, so then we can remove this as well, remove that one as well, and keep this as simple as possible. Now if we do that, right now we've broken it, you can see that it's not working. So if ever you put an icon and it's not working, it's going to look something like that. Um, because where I have viewers, I'm also going to write icon. And so it's viewers and it will include an icon. It's, maybe icon's not the best name, you could do like icon, um, I don't want to do like icon pseudo. Anyway, I'm going to leave icon for this one because it's more about how to achieve things. It's a simple demo. If you can come up with a better name for your actual projects, you can go for that. 
Um, so now I'm not going to set it all up, but just to show you if we did need to use another icon in here, just how quickly we could do it. So uh, let's go back over to Font Awesome here and let's go look back in their icons and let's just say we wanted our angry face right here. So again, all I need is this. So what I would do is, uh, where could we include that? Let's say we want to put it after our game name. So game name, I could add icon and uh, right there. So that's going to bring everything in, but we don't have an icon yet. So then I would come over to my main where I have my name and I have my name before. And here we can write in our content. I'll leave it blank, but then we'll come over to our angry icon, click this guy right here, do the uh, backslash and paste that in. And if we go take a look, we have an angry icon right there. Um, actually, maybe the icon would be better if it was an icon before um, or something like that, icon before. Um, and then you could actually have one that's set for before and you could have another one set for afters instead. Um, just because I've set up this to be a default icon for always going before. So that way you could sort of pick and choose a little more if you wanted to. Um, it's up to you. I'm going to leave it just for now because of this, how this project's going to work out that the before is perfect for me in every circumstance. All right. So I hope you liked that video. I hope you learned a couple of things along the way. As I mentioned, if you're not used to pseudo elements, I'd really strongly encourage you to go and check out my series where I did a deep dive on them. The first video in there might be more than enough for you, but you can do a whole bunch of really, really cool things with pseudo elements. They're very robust and they're a good way to bring in decorations or decor into your website without having to add some useless markup. If you already know how they work and you just want to see how I built out the rest of the card and you didn't see that video, go and check that one out. Links for everything is down in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. A really big thank you to my patrons for helping support me every single month. You guys are absolutely amazing. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome. You might notice that the setup here has changed a little bit. It might change again uh, after a few videos going through some. The basement is being moved around a lot right now where I record the kids thing. Everything's been moving around. So things might be changing quite often, but the content of these videos... Sean? Yeah. <laughs> so let's jump right into it. But once we... You want to say hi? Hi. Bye.